That's great. great. How are you? Doing well by the grace of God. Thank you for asking. The Kendra, good to see you again, ma'am. Thank see, to have, you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sister. See, we have my sister Adrian in the building as well. I've been great. Thank you for asking, Adrian. Been blessed, been blessed sincerely, facing challenges and, and overcoming them head on. That's how we meet the, the obstacles. Head on. We're not running from no difficulties. Meeting them head on. See another familiar name, Sierra. Sierra has joined us. How you doing, Sierra? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Did I see my brother Hassan come in? Is that my brother Hassan? Yes, sir. Man, peace and blessings, King. Yes, sir. Hassan Lego. Wow, Lego Salam. That is the 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 mogul, the young mogul of Trilopia. <laughs> yes, sir. Brother. We have a mogul that has entered the room, you all. Check him out on, on Instagram. Drop your Instagram in the chat, brother. So we can follow that black on that black on legacy that you get ready to build that's already in the making, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. I got y'all. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, you all, thank you for coming on. We're getting ready to start briefly. Bye. Just to get a gauge of those who are in the room so far as more come in. If you are totally new to dispatching and the trucking industry, just so I can get a gauge of the room, I want you to please drop a one in the chat, you all. If you are totally new to dispatching and the trucking industry, because I do see some familiar faces in here. I just want to get a gauge of where everybody is, okay? There's nothing wrong with being totally new because we have something for each segment, whether you're brand new, whether you have taken the course or you have some experience in trucking, we have something for everybody tonight. Just want to see who all is new and this is your first time hearing about this concept, okay? Couple brothers, praise be to God. All right, so for those who have no knowledge of dispatching or trucking at all, we're getting ready to open up with that portion to get you an introduction about what dispatching is and how you can make money in the trucking industry um, by booking loads for drivers without your own equipment, without your own insurance, without the financial risk and uh, debt or liability that comes with that type of investment, right? It's a minimal investment business, minimal startup capital, but it can yield high return depending on your, your drive, your hustle, your fortitude, your willingness to build relationships with drivers and your communication skills. So it's a great opportunity for those who can see yourselves in that type of role. And I also have something for, as I mentioned, those who have experience, who are the seasoned vets, who've taken the course. We're gonna talk about not just the dispatching basics, but a new technique that I've, I'm using now to gain more clients and to have more influence and reach as a dispatcher that I did not share in the past, but that I just recently began implementing again. Of course, like I, like I told you all during the course, anything that I learned as new has taken my business to another level, I'm gonna share it with you all as soon as I get it. That's just the type of brother I am. So I'm gonna share that with you all, as well as a way that you can start generating passive income just by having the right understanding of how to match drivers with factoring companies, right? And we're gonna talk about what factoring companies are for those who don't know what they are. As well as in closing, I have to share this with you all for the seasoned vets that are dispatching and that have taken the course already or that are already in trucking. I have to share with you all my secret sauce on how I book loads, next day loads and maximize the profit for my drivers. You all, probably about two weeks ago, I was able to generate $15,580 for one of my drivers who has a flatbed. And we grossed him that for the week, $15,580. Now, he, that may not seem like a number that's just outrageous, right? That, that's feasible for a semi-truck, especially a flatbed. It's not nowhere near on the low end for sure, but it's right around the high, mid-high range. But what's really beneficial about how we were able to do it, that number was he came out of Florida and we were still able to get that amount. 
And for those who know the trucking industry, Florida is the worst state. If not one of it is the worst state for trucking because they have the lowest rates, but we were still able to gross them $15,580 during that week by using this method that I'm getting ready to just show you all before we close this session out. So we have something for everybody. Thank you all for coming on the free masterclass. It is being recorded, so you can take notes, but just know that it is coming to you, God willing, whenever the course or the training is complete tonight. So we're going to get right into the sharing of the screen. Bear with me for a second. All right, so for my seasoned vets, bear with me before we get to your portion, okay? going to show our, our brothers and sisters who are just coming into the concept of dispatching what it really is. And feel free to add in the comments what you've learned and what you've experienced thus far. I want to hear about your journey as you've been dispatching as well. So please feel free to drop anything in the, in the chat that you've, in, that you've um, encountered in your journey as a dispatcher. Okay. So you all who don't know me, okay. my name is Brother Demetrius. Demetrius X, I am the CEO of Torchlight Logistics. We are a full service dispatching company and we're getting ready to transition into also owning equipment as well. And we may end up becoming an asset broker where we may end up going into freight brokerage as well, but that's, that's some of our goals, but we are a full service dispatching company and we also teach others who desire to make money in the trucking industry without a truck, right? So if you're interested in learning dispatching, we have the blueprint for you. And we also have a one-on-one -on -one coaching package if you would desire to learn, not inside of a classroom session with multiple, but just one-on-one -on -one training on how to set you up from building your business credit to showing you how to invest in trucking equipment, the right types of engines, how to hire a driver, as well as the right insurance to purchase. We have that service as well, along with branding, getting your logos done, your flyers done, your business cards, how to get your company out and marketing on social media. We have that service that we're offering as well. So if you're interested in that one-on-one -on -one training, we do provide that. We also provide the classroom session solely just for dispatch. All right. So just in a nutshell, you all, just want to give you some, some benefits of entrepreneurship as it relates to dispatching and why this is a good option for some in this economy that we're living in. We know that you know, from the looks of it, right? You know, if it, it fluctuates, it seems like daily, whether where COVID is and where COVID isn't. You know, that one, one day COVID is rampant, one day COVID is non-existent, it seems like in this economy. However, you know, there was a time where no, we were being pressured. Some of us were being threatened with our job, with our employment status by not getting a vaccine or getting a vaccine. Or if we wanted to work from home, if we didn't want to work from home, there was so much controversy and so much drama going on around the workplace when it comes to this type of economy that we're living in, that many people, when we did begin working from home, those of us who could, we got to the point where we really enjoyed working from home because there was much more peace. There was much more um, mental clarity to be able to focus on your assignment with less stress, less pressure, and it wasn't a negative environment. So if you want to cultivate a work from home situation for yourself, where you, you create the atmosphere for yourself, you don't have the toxicity of uh, environment filled with racism, an environment filled with hatred, an environment filled with those who are creating a negative environment, then dispatching is that type of role for you. I'll say that because every day, Monday through Friday, when it's time for me to get to work, my commute is literally from the bed to getting myself together, brushing my teeth, washing my face, making prayer, and get it on my laptop after I do some studying and so on and so forth. My commute is very short, you all. I save gas money, I save time, 
And the environment of working in my own office provides a certain level of peace that I just was not able to obtain in my previous employment situations. And just to give those who don't know me, and it's your first time hearing this story, prior to me dispatching, I was working two jobs. I was working two jobs. I was working one job that was on third shift as an inventory control clerk. And I also was working a first shift job as an admin for a cable company called Southeast Utilities of Georgia, where they put up fiber optics all throughout the city of Augusta, Georgia. So I had two jobs, one on first, one on third. No time for myself whatsoever. Literally was running myself crazy working those jobs, trying to save money, trying to put myself and my future family in a better position within the sacrifice. However, it got to the point where I knew I needed to make a transition because I was totally unfulfilled, burned out, stressed out, and I, I didn't have the time to focus on the talents, the gifts, and the goals that I had for myself. That's when I knew it was time for me to begin making an exit from that, finance, that, that employment situation. So in doing that, I was looking for a way out, entrepreneur by heart, entrepreneur by nature, looking for an opportunity. I came across one of, one of my good friends that I've known for many years that has been involved in the trucking industry for over 15 years, drove trucks, had his own trucks, has his own dispatching company, also has his own freight brokerage company. He was promoting his dispatch training class and I happened to see it and I said, man, I know the brother, I know he's official, I know he's solid. Let me call him and see what he has going on. Call my brother and ask him questions about what is dispatching and how are you making money doing this in the, in the trucking industry whole time, brothers and sisters, that I, my mind frame was to stay away from truck because I never saw myself getting inside a physical truck, getting a CDL, driving a truck because it just wasn't the thing for me. I never saw myself doing that, although I respect and tip my hat to any driver who sacrifices to do that because it takes a lot of sacrifice and discipline to do so, being away from your family, being away from your loved ones, being away from you know, things that are convenient for yourself, you know, using a restroom when you want to, just basic things like that. That's what truck drivers have to endure. So I respect them, but I just never saw that lifestyle for me. So I always stayed away from trucking. I didn't know there were avenues to make money in trucking without operating the physical equipment that were feasible. So when he explained to me that dispatching was something that you just simply call brokers on the phone and email brokers and book loads for drivers. It sounded very simple, but then as he began to explain it, it dealt with having effective communication skills. It dealt with networking. It dealt with being able to uh, plug drivers with brokers and shippers. I said, well, I said, that's, that's me all day long. No, I, I truly see my one of my talents as being an effective communicator. I see myself as being one who loves to network with other people. I just never saw myself doing it in trucking. So I saw and recognized the opportunity and how it really fit so perfect with my character, my skill set, who I am, my, my attributes, and some of my goals in entrepreneurship. So I knew, I knew that if I put my all into learning this system, then I would end up becoming successful in, di in dispatching you all. And by the grace of God, I recognized the opportunity, took his course, studied it, had one-on-one -on -one training with him. And within a month of taking his course, I had three drivers that I was dispatching for while working those two jobs, while working those two jobs. On first shift, dispatching three trucks while on first shift, generating the same income that I was getting from those two jobs combined, sometimes more, sometimes a little less. But I, I, I realized that if I was able to focus 100% of my um, time on not just the jobs and dispatching, but focus solely on dispatching, then I would be able to scale it more, scale it quicker, and generate even more income by putting more time and energy and effort into it. And by the grace of God, I was able to make that transition in September of last year, 
full-time dispatching by the grace of God. And it's been one of the greatest business decisions that I've made. And it has been a true blessing for myself. That's why I'm such an advocate for it. And how I came to teach others about it when others started seeing my success that I was posting online, that I was sharing with my friends, just being excited about this new concept that I didn't know about. I had many who would reach out to me via text, via DM, and ask if I could teach them. And being the type of brother that I am, instantly, I got you, brother. I got you, sister. So I literally had about eight, nine people that I was teaching individually how to dispatch. But it got to the point where I was gaining more clients. I had more responsibility. The mosque opened back up here in Augusta, Georgia. For those who don't know what that means, means you know, during COVID, our spiritual house was shut down. Well, it was suspended. We weren't going to physically meet. And it opened back up in November of last year. So more responsibility. I needed to be there. I needed to you know, deal with my driver. So I wasn't able to adequately nourish everyone one-on-one -on -one individually, just teaching, not charging a dime. But it, it was recommended to me that if you wanted to be able to still provide value to those who are asking you to teach them, form, get everybody together and form a course, get a curriculum in place where you can teach everybody at one time how to dispatch. So God put it on my heart to create the intensive dispatch training course that has taught over a hundred people, you all, and running how to effectively make at least 1K to 2K plus in the trucking industry without a truck. And it has been a blessing. I've been getting calls and texts from those who have taken the course, thanking me for the service, the quality that they've gained from it, as well as the affordability of the course. And it's truly a blessing to be used to not only generate income for myself and exercise entrepreneurship in this day and time, but also to help others begin to do for self and generate income for themselves and their families in the trucking industry. It's been a true blessing, you all. So working from home has been a blessing for myself personally. It has given me more flexibility as it states. I can get done sometimes at 12, 12, um, 12 p.m. I'm done, I'm done dispatching. Sometimes I don't start until 1 p.m. You know, I have flexibility to, if I want to go out and do something and take care of something at the gym, if I want to go to the growth, if I want, if I have an errand that I need to run, I'm not locked, locked down to an office, to a cubicle. I'm not locked down to a, a physical location. I can move around a little bit to take care of what I need to take care of. It also provides me to be able to live on my own terms, right? There are times where you will need to be in front of your laptop and your, and your cell phone making things happen, of course. It's not a no work type position, but it does provide you the ability to make your schedule to the best of your ability, the way you need to formulate your plan on how you're going to dispatch for your clients. You can choose how many clients you want to take on. You can choose what type of equipment you want to dispatch for. So you can live on your terms when it comes to who you want to deal with, how you want to make it happen to a degree. And also what I loved about this versus the traditional route of working the nine to five and the, um, the 10, to, 10 to six is that when I was working those two jobs, the first and third shift, I knew how much I was gonna make on a weekly basis. I knew how much taxes were gonna come out based on the amount of hours that I worked, right? But as a dispatcher, the beauty of it is there's no limitations to what you can make, depending on how many clients you are able to obtain and how, and how strong your drive is as a dispatcher. That's the beauty of it, you all. If you are satisfied with two clients and you're, you're comfortable there, then all, all praise be to God. That's how much you will make based on how much you can dispatch for those two clients. But if you, like myself, have a desire to scale and grow and continue to build your company and build your model, then there's literally no limitations to, to what you can make as a dispatcher. I put one to two K plus in the header of the flyers to show you what's feasible, what's realistic initially, right? But you have people that are dispatching that are making $3,000 or more a week, right? 
by positioning multiple trucks in areas that are paying high simply by making calls to brokers and shippers you all. And lastly, it's a great entry point into the trucking industry to begin creating some generational wealth for yourself. Dispatching is a company that you can pass down to your progeny, to your seeds, to your children. I could not pass the job down to my future children. I couldn't pass down uh, a degree to my future children. But this, what we're building, Torchlight Logistics, by the grace of God, is something that will be able to be passed down. And whatever logistics company that you choose to create is something that you too can pass down to your children and your children's children to create a legacy of generational wealth for your family. And once again, it's only an entry point into the trucking industry. And the reason why it's such a good entry point is because of the, once again, the low startup capital, which we're gonna get into in a few slides, all right? As I mentioned, just to reiterate on the mental because the mental is so important, you all. Anything we're doing, we wanna make sure that we have our mind in the right place. The first thing that I had to do was I had to see how that opportunity of dispatching aligned with who I am, with my gifts and my purpose. So you all, I pray that you all can see by this masterclass tonight, whether or not this activity of dispatching, working from home with your laptop and your cell phone, communicating with drivers and brokers, if you can see whether or not this aligns with the core of who you are. Because that's important because if it does not align with the core of who you are, you may not put the right energy into it to truly become successful. That goes with anything. If it aligns with the core of who you are and you can see yourself in it and, and, and you can see yourself feeling fulfilled in doing it, you put so much more energy, so much more fervor into doing it where success pretty much just runs to you. So. Blessed is he who finds his purpose in life and is found fulfilling it. I truly believe that through dispatching, I'm fulfilling some of my purpose because I love to help people. I love to help people. And truck drivers are in that category of those who need the help because they're driving and operating heavy equipment. They don't have the time to get on the phone and call and chase down brokers to find the best paying loads. They don't have time to do the analysis. They don't have time to do the invoicing on the load that they just completed. They need somebody who's going to be able to facilitate those goals, who's gonna help maximize their profit, who's gonna help communicate with brokers on their behalf. And I truly believe that me doing that in this way is helping to fulfill my purpose of loving to help people become successful. It puts me in a coaching position. And that's what I love to do. I didn't know that was my purpose until later in life, but I, I truly enjoy coaching others. Sometimes as a dispatcher, you may find yourself having to motivate the driver. You may find yourself having to advise the driver about not only the loads that you're booking for them, but about life in general. So that role truly helped me to feel fulfilled by being able to use some of the skills that I truly believe that Almighty God has blessed me with, which is helping other people. And I pray you can find yourself in that same position. And lastly, and most importantly, you know, once I recognized that opportunity that I was gonna be in a position to be able to help effectively communicate, help other people, and also make money while I was doing what I truly enjoyed doing. Lastly, like I mentioned to you, I had to, I had to be willing to invest in myself. I had to be willing to invest in myself. What does that mean? That means time, energy into studying the information. It means sacrifice, um, doing things that I would rather do to go over this recording, to go over this particular literature, to go over this particular uh, piece of information, but it also means financially being willing to invest in myself. We invest in so many things. Just, just, just imagine you all, how many things we invest in and we don't realize that we're investing in them. 
we look at investment as just putting money into a stock. But anytime you put your time and, and attention into something, you're, you're investing into it. We invest in things that are frivolous on a daily basis. And the last thing that we invest in, consequently, is ourself. And, and we wonder why we're not growing spiritually, mentally, and financially. It's because we're not investing in ourselves. We're investing in everything other than ourselves. So just by positioning my mind while I was working those two jobs, listening to audio recordings on financial success, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Rich Dad's Guide to Investing, and seeing him say that the majority of people want to be secure and comfortable, then rich, right? That's the nature of us. We want to be secure and comfortable. So we invest our time in a secure job. We invest our time in making our lives comfortable. And we bear, we put very little time into truly becoming rich. There's nothing wrong with desiring to be rich. I had to make up my mind that I was willing to sacrifice a measure of security and a measure of comfort in order to put myself in a position to strive to be rich. And I, once I changed my priorities, I started changing my actual physical circumstances. So I had to be willing to invest in myself. I had to be willing to, to spend some money that I would rather put in savings than be more secure into an actual course, into some literature, into some knowledge that was going to empower me to truly become successful. And the quote states, when we fail to invest in ourselves, we will not just remain where we are, we, where we currently are, but even worse, we actually begin to degenerate. We begin to go backwards when we don't invest in ourselves. If you're not exercising, your muscles don't stay the same, they actually begin to atrophy. They begin to actually break down and become useless when we don't utilize our muscles, brothers and sisters. So now that we have the foundation set tonight for those who are new to dispatching, we're going to learn the role of a dispatcher in trucking and also how to earn 4K plus monthly without a truck. And for those who are already kind of seasoned and have a foundation, we're going to go into the next portion, which is the new method of client acquisition that I was telling you all about. It's a method called cold texting. We talked about cold calling, right, during the course. But now I have a new method that's much, much more effective called cold texting. I'm gonna show us how to do that, as well as how to obtain passive income via factoring companies. And for, the, for those who know what a factoring company is, of course, you know what I mean by factoring company, but for those who do not know what a factoring company means, a factoring company is a company that is a third party company that, will give a driver the money for the load in advance for a percentage of the money. So this is how it works, brothers and sisters who are new to factoring. If my driver runs a load from Atlanta to Charlotte, North Carolina, and the broker is paying $1,000 on that load from Atlanta to Charlotte, North Carolina, normally brokers don't pay the driver until 14 to potentially 30 days. They, they don't pay them. They, they're normally set up on net 30 accounts, so they have 30 days to pay the driver. But drivers don't want to wait 30 days to get paid, so they will go through a factoring company who will advance the $1,000 to the driver for a fee for 2 to 3%. So they'll charge the driver $20 or $30 on that $1,000, give them 970, keep 30 for themselves and then collect the 1,000 from the broker 14 to 30 days later. That's how factoring companies work. And I'm going to show us a method on how to partner with a factoring company and sign new carriers up with them and get a percentage every month of the loads that you, uh, fact, that loads that get factored by that carrier. That's the way you can just generate passive income in itself. And lastly, we're going to talk about how I maximize next day loads. When, when, I, when I was talking about grossing my drop of $15,580 two weeks ago, I'm going to show you the strategy in which I did in order to make that happen. All right. So for those who are new to the world of dispatching, what exactly is 
this thing called dispatching in the trucking industry, right? All right, so the dispatcher, you all, is the one who works on behalf of the carrier. Carrier is another term for driver or trucking company, right? The freight broker is the one who the, the dispatcher, which is yourself and myself, will be calling or emailing to actually book the load that's going from Atlanta to Charlotte with the broker has the load, right? The broker gets the load from a shipper, which is a warehouse, a warehouse or some type of port or place where the freight is located. Shippers need a middleman in order to move their freight because they don't have the manpower or department to reach out to qualified drivers to move their freight from one location to another location. So they're willing to pay a freight broker who specializes in you know, reaching out to carriers to get the loads moved from one location to another location. So as a dispatcher, we will be communicating with the freight broker the most, but we also find ourselves communicating with the shipper. You will find yourself negotiating a rate on each load that's suitable for your driver and that's suitable for the freight broker. So negotiation is a part of it. Communication is a part of it. Being able to have the knowledge to explain to a broker why you need the rate increased is a huge part of dispatching, which is what we learn in the intensive dispatch training course. All right, the dispatcher's role can also include handling invoicing, scheduling roadside assistance and other back office functions for the carrier. So what we mean by handling invoicing you all is once that driver runs that load from Atlanta, Georgia to Charlotte, North Carolina, then of course the driver is looking to be paid, right? We talked about how the factoring company works. The factoring company will advance the driver the $1,000 well, minus the 2%, which would be $980 and then they'll get their money on the back end. But how, the, how we handle the invoicing for them is when the driver completes the load, they drop the load off. The, the receiver, which is the location that receives the load, that's the final destination, they're going to sign what is called a BOL, right? That is the bill of lading, which serves as a proof of delivery. It shows that the driver actually delivered the load. They're going to email you or text you that paperwork as the dispatcher, as well as what's called a rate confirmation that has the rate on how much the load was actually paying. That's the contract. You as the dispatcher and me as a dispatcher, we will now insert those two documents in the factoring company's portal. And that is what invoicing is. It's simple, you all. Very simple for those who may wonder what is invoice? Do I have to work at QuickBooks? Do I have to do Turbo? No, it's nothing advanced, it's nothing complicated. It's simply uploading a, two documents and putting a few load details into a factoring company's portal to get your driver paid. All right, scheduling roadside assistance. What do we mean by that? That simply means if your driver is based out of Charlotte, North Carolina, but they break down in, uh, uh, let's say Cleveland, Ohio. They break down in Cleveland, Ohio. They don't know anything about Cleveland, Ohio. They don't know where the mechanics are in Cleveland, Ohio. They may need somebody like ourselves who can go online, find and research where the mobile mechanics are and see what the rates they charge are and find the best rate for the best quality service, right? That's roadside assistance for them. And also share, they'll share their location with you. You can share the location with the mobile mechanic. They can either come out there. If the driver can't move their truck, they'll come to them. Or you can direct your driver to where the mechanic may be located to get the best deal for the best quality service. As simple as that. Just knowing how to Google and research when your driver breaks down. Sometimes the driver may need that done. And lastly, other back office functions for the carrier. That, that, that varies from 
driver to driver. Um, some drivers may ask you, can, can you handle the taxes for me? You know, if that's your skill set, then you, know, you just added another, another value to your service. You know, depending on what they need done, they may need another back office function done. So you just get with your driver and you will see what exactly they need done from their dispatcher. All right, so let's talk about the startup costs that we were talking about, all right? So to start a official company on the books with the Secretary of State in Georgia, anyway, is only $100, you all, to file a domestic LLC in Georgia. It's only $100, really nominal fee. So we always start with the corporate structure. Do you have to have an LLC? or a, a corporation to dispatch? No, you don't. But we always recommend doing that because to have a business bank account, to have yourself establishing business credit is invaluable. So there's no reason to have to run, you know, to do backdoor business, to do business that's under the table. There's no reason to do that when we know that we can put ourselves in a better position being set up correctly and being set up in a way where we are, we're, we're doing it for longevity and for long-term growth versus a quick, let me get some money from dispatching. Oh, go ahead and just set your company up properly and reap the benefits in the future. You also will need a laptop, you all. If you have a laptop already, that $500 fee, which could be 500, it could be less, it could be more depending on what type of laptop you're looking for. I just put a medium range in there. Just put a medium range in there. You can find a new laptop for around that price. No, that's not too crazy or use one around that price a little under, depending on what your budget is. You don't have to go out and get the newest MacBook that costs $1,900 to $2,000. But if you, once again, if you have a laptop that's functioning, then you can ignore that second line. You don't need to even worry about that cost. Thirdly, do you need a website? No, you don't need a website, but does a website help you tremendously as a dispatcher? Absolutely. You are, I find clients, well, I won't say I find clients come to me simply because I have a functional website that they can search in Google and they can also see my links on my social media pages, click on, look at the services that I provide, fill out the forms, Next thing you know, I wake up to documents where drivers are looking at uh, the services that I provide and are inquiring about the services. That is something that is beyond explainable how valuable that is to have in place. There's no reason why we shouldn't have a website. So even though it's not needed to dispatch, it's highly recommended. And that is a very low end, $150. The only reason why I put that low amount is because I built my website myself. And you don't have to be a computer programmer to do it. Wix has templates that you can use that you can pretty much just type in the information you need typed in and create the links you need created that you can do it for free. But if you're going to pay somebody, you know, I wouldn't pay them a lot of money because you don't need a very extensive, super sophisticated website. You just need a basic website that's going to list your services, that's going to have a link to a form that your, your potential clients can fill out, that's going to go to your email. Simple as that. A few pictures of your logo. If you want to put a picture of yourself, fine, but you don't need a sophisticated $3,000, $5,000 website. There's no need for that. You can get that when you scale and you have the affordability for that if you choose to do so, but just start small and grow, right? A digital flyer will help when you're marketing your services on social media, when you're marketing your services via email, having a digital fly that lists the services you provide, you know, the, how much you charge for your dispatching service. What do you do with your dispatching service? You know, having that flyer is very critical because as we know, social media is a game changer in this economy. You can literally reach thousands of people just with one post. So having a digital flyer is definitely something that will help your marketing as a dispatching service. All right. Business cards. I just put $20 because if you want just to do the minimum, 
you can literally go to Staples, order them on Staples online, or you can physically go to the store. And it's like $20 for like maybe 250 to 500 business cards. But the reason why you will need business cards is because as an entrepreneur, you're going to need a business card anytime you're out and about. But specifically when you go to truck stops and you start speaking with drivers soliciting your service, it's always good to have a business card in your pocket or in your wallet that you can pass to a driver when you get ready to depart from each other. So that business card is one of the expenses that I included in the startup calls, as well as a subscription to EAT's low board, which is actually $39.95 per month, only a four cent difference. But that is something that you will need. I always say, even if your driver gives you access to their load board, you want to have your own load board subscription that you can always find loads from for whatever reason. If, if your driver stops driving or whatever, they don't pay their bill, you still have your load board in place. All right. And the load board you are, for those who are new to dispatching, is the location where you actually find the loads from that are going from Atlanta to Charlotte that are going from Charlotte to um, Missouri, right? That's the location where you'll be looking for the loads at, analyzing them, and then calling the brokers that have the loads listed on that board. That is where it happens at. So when you add those costs up, you all, it comes out to $854.99 with all of them included, the laptop, uh, business cards, flyers, LLC in Georgia, Check your state, it may vary. I know in Texas, it's $300 for an LLC. In Delaware, I believe it was 90 at one time. Check your state and see how much it costs to file for one in your state. But, it, but with the Georgia LLC and the, the estimates that I have in my startup cost expense sheet comes around $854.99. That's right under $1,000, right? But once again, the majority of us are fortunate enough to have a working laptop. So if we can take the laptop cost off, that's only $354.99. You are, that is a, a very, very low startup cost for a business that can generate you on a low end $1,000 a week. As I mentioned, that can be laid, that can be made back and literally booking two to three loads. Your first two to three loads, you can make $354.99 back. So you'll be already in the black, already out of debt, already out of your initial investment just on one or two days after you begin booking loads, you all. So you don't find too many industries where you can make that type of money on a weekly basis for that low startup cost. That almost sounds too good to be true. I know. It sounds scamish. It sounds like it's, it, 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 it's you know, you blowing smoke. But brothers and sisters, it is real. It is real. It is a reality, and it happens every day. And it's a service that is needed in an essential industry. As a dispatcher, you have to look at it as you are entering an eight hundred billion dollar industry, right? The trucking industry is an eight hundred billion dollar industry. And it is a needed service. If the truck drivers were to stop driving and transporting those goods, the country would shut down in anywhere between maybe three, three days to a week, minimum. Three days to a week would be a national security threat if the trucking industry was not operating. That's why when they talk about truck drivers going on strike, they start getting nervous, but they haven't been able to pull one off because you no, know, just like a lot of different things that this they're not unified. However, it is an essential industry. So therefore, a, dispatch, a dispatcher is an essential role in an essential industry. So there will always be opportunities to make money in this industry. All right. So let's look at briefly, let's look at the math behind 1K, not a month. It's that it meant to say a week, you all not 1K plus a month. Let's look at the math behind earning 1K plus a month. Is it really feasible? I'm gonna go through this briefly. For most semi-trucks, you can book between 7,000 to 10,000 worth of freight a week on average. That's average, you all. 
I just mentioned to you all, I have a flatbed driver that I was able to gross $15,580 specifically for in a weekly base on a, on a weekly run, right? But let's just say on a low end, right? We ain't even talking about seven. Let's just say we're able to book $6,000 worth of freight for a total of three trucks. I always use this example because it's very realistic. That's literally four loads in one week that are paying $1,500 each for a semi truck. That's nothing. But I want to show you all the low end to show you what you can make on the low end so that you can imagine what you can make on the higher end. So if you had those three trucks that are making $6,000 a week, that's $18,000 worth of freight that you booked in that one week. As a dispatcher, you may say, okay, Demetrius, how much do I make for booking those loads, right? Well, dispatchers typically charge between five and 10% for each load book. You'll normally see the higher end of 10% for equipment types like box trucks and hot shots uh, because those are more difficult equipment types to dispatch for versus the semi trucks, right? But you can still charge that amount for semis as well, depending on the driver. So let's just say, uh, this is an example before we move on to the next screen. This is an example of a rate confirmation, you all. This is a load that was 486 miles from Columbiana, Ohio to Southington, Connecticut, right? You can deliver a load the next day. It's a one-day load as long as it's around, no higher than around 650 miles. Even though I have a driver that has next day 700 mile loads, I don't know how he does it, but he's just different. But normally you can get 600 miles comfortably in one day, right? That's, a, that's around 11 hours of drive time that the driver can drive. So this is 486 miles. That's a one day, next day delivery. We were able to get $2,750 for that, for that pay for 486 miles. That is, if somebody wants to help do the math with me, let's do the math on that, how many that is per mile, how, how, how many dollars that is per mile. That is 27.50 divided by 4.86. That's $5.66 per mile. $5.66 per mile, way above average way above average. That's by knowing how to position the truck in the right areas to maximize the freight because the reason why I sent him to Colum to Ohio is because I know Ohio for flatbeds is paying ridiculous right now. They're paying ridiculous right now. So when you're looking at the national average rates for those, I'm talking to my season dispatchers now, when you're looking at the national rates and you see in the Midwest, you see 350 or $4, don't don't get don't don't look at those numbers and say that's the only thing I can make. Don't look at those numbers and say that's what I can max at. I, once again, I gave you all those numbers as a guide to show that is the minimum you should be accepting coming out of those regions. But don't get so caught up on those numbers that you that you think okay I I can only make four dollars per mile coming out of the Midwest. You can make way more than that, depending on what state you put them in and what the rates are going for in that area because. The loads are prevalent. Your equipment type is in high demand. So because of the law of supply and demand, your truck now becomes in high demand because of the load amount, right? And the scarcity of trucks is low, but the loads are high, right? So now you have the ability to get that $5.66 mile load just on that one day. So just imagine if you did five loads like that, right? Five lows, five times 2750. Let's see what that comes out to. That comes out to $13,750. And we talking about on the low end of, of only getting 6,000 a week, right? That's what, that. this is actually feasible, you all, these numbers I'm talking about. But I just wanna show us on the low end what we can make. All right, so on the low end, going back to three trucks, 6,000 on average a week, 
that's $18,000 worth of freight. If you're charging 6% for every load that you book, you're already at your thousand mark. You're already at your thousand dollar mark, right? If you're charging 8%, which is what I charge, you're at $1,440. And if you're charging 10%, you're hitting them over the head saying, I'm getting all of my money. Then you get $1,800, of course. Just on the minimum of getting $6,000 off of three trucks. But you see, it is feasible to get much more than six. Just imagine if you're getting 10 a week off of those three trucks, that's $30,000, right? So that 10% off of 30,000 is $3,000, right? 8% is what, 2,400? I believe so. So you are, the, the profit potential is really astronomical for the type of work that you're doing in the comfort of your own home or wherever you have Wi-Fi, cell phone, and a laptop. It's really, it's really something that is really amazing, especially when you're coming in with low startup capital in this industry, you all. So as I mentioned, just imagine if you dispatch four to five trucks weekly and you were making those types of numbers. Can you all see the big picture? You all can actually see what you can actually make in this market as a dispatcher, all right? So while I want to, at this time, I wanna to transition to the next portion before we close this thing out. I wanna make sure that I cover the next portion, which is going to be for my season dispatches as well. But for those who are, are novices and new to the industry, this is something that can help you all as well when you get to this point. So give me one second as I share my screen again. One second. All right, so new client acquisition. text community. Get ready to pull it up, give me one second. All right, you should be able to see it now. I want you all to, to look this up when you get a chance, you all. It's called simple texting. I told some of my students about this before. But I want you to be aware of this. This is going hand in hand with the cold, cold texting concept. It's called simple texting. I'm going to put it in the chat. With this software, you can literally add numbers to a database and blast out a text all at one time. So remember, we learned how to go on the FMCSA register and the DAT registry to find numbers to cold call for drivers. Y'all remember that? Now, you can do that as well, but you can also put those numbers into a database and blast that text to 100 numbers all at one time. Some people don't really respond to emails that quickly, but a lot of people are looking at their cell phones, they're checking their cell phones. So you can literally go on the FMCSA registry and collect the numbers, just the, just the phone numbers off of the new carriers that just signed up and got their authority and do a blast text and say, hey, congratulations, I see you just got your authority. This is, such, this is Demetrius with Torchlight Logistics. Um, I'm just here to see if I can add any value to your company in any way you need. Let me know. A simple text. If, and, if, and it's a numbers game, you all. We know that if all 100 aren't going to respond. Yes, I need your help. It's a numbers game. If you can just get one out of the 100, you've done great. Next week, you do another 100. But what if you get five or three or two? Right? The goal is just to get one. 
through sending the blast text. So for those who are familiar with the FMCSA registry and DAT registry, I'm going to, I'm going to show us DAT registry right quick, just, just so I can make the example realistic to you all once again. Bear with me for a second. How many of the students who are in the call right now that have taken the course, how many have access to a low board? If you don't mind me asking. If you have access to a low board, drop a one in the chat. You have access to a low board, drop a one in the chat. Okay. Nobody has access to a low board. Oh. All right. Yeah. So right now you all, I am on DAT's directory. This is a place on the low board DAT where you can actually find drivers. You can actually find drivers. So I'm getting ready to show us how to do that. right on DAT's directory. Let's go to Georgia. So I'm, I'm selecting the city of Atlanta, Georgia, you all. All right, so you can see these numbers, right? You all can see these phone numbers. These are, these are this is a list of carriers that are on this directory. You can literally go through these phone numbers, copy them, and paste them into your directory, right? And you can build your list up to the point where you have hundreds of phone numbers that you're blasting out one text to. Once again, it's a numbers game, you always call it cold texting. Everyone may not respond back. You can do a follow-up call as well, but cold texting is a great way to get the ball rolling on getting some clients and reaching a lot of people at one time. That's the whole concept behind it. You can just get one out of the hundred. You've done great. So that's the concept, you all. You go to the directory, you get the numbers, you copy them and you put them into the database in simple texting. Once you get your database filled up, then you can start blasting those texts out all at one time. And for those who may see me on social media, you may see that me sometimes I may say, if you're interested in learning about making money in the trucking industry without a truck, text dispatch to 855-685-1753. That's the same software that I use. Same software, simple texting. I'm able to reach multiple people all at one time and provide value just by putting out certain information. You can put out whatever you want to put out and it comes to them individually, not all in a group text like you, they're in your phone context. So that's the value of having this particular um, software that you're using and incorporating into your business. All right, does anybody have any questions about simple texting or cold texting or using this strategy to find clients? Any questions on that? All right. Well, also you all, what I wanted to share with you all is I mentioned how to make money passively through factoring companies how to make money passively through factoring companies. What do you mean by that, Brother Demetrius? All right, I myself currently am what is called an ambassador for TAFs. TAFs is a factoring company that funds invoices for drivers. 
They're the ones that's funding that $1,000 I was telling you about in advance for the drive, right? And they get two or three percent for, for funding the driver in advance. All right, so the way it works is, since I'm an ambassador for them, every driver that I get signed up with TAVs, even if they're not somebody I'm dispatching for, just by recommending them to TAVs, I get 10% off of every factored amount. So let's just say that the low was paying $1,000 and they charge 3%. I'm gonna get 10% off of the $30, which is the 3% of 1,000. I'm gonna get 10% off the $30, which is $3. You say, Demetrius, that's peanuts. Why are you telling me about getting $3, 10%? That's, that's not no passive income. I can't even get a bag of chips with $3, but the concept is if you are able to get 100 signed up with tabs, that three dollars turns into three hundred. No, these don't. Even, these don't. They don't even have to be your clients, you all. They don't have to be your dispatch clients. They could just be people that you're reaching out to that you know you're going on the FMCSA. You're seeing new authorities get established. You're putting them into your 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 database on Simple Text, and, and you're reaching out to them. Do you need assistance with the factoring company? I'm an ambassador for Tavs. I can get you a lower rate if you sign up with Tavs. They sign up with TAFs, you tell them to tell the representatives that you refer to them, or you can tell the representatives, hey, I'm referring XYZ Trucking. Now XYZ Trucking, every load they get factored, 10% of that factoring amount comes to you. So you can literally have someone in your business who's simply focusing on helping new drivers sign up for factoring companies and you getting that 10% off of each load that's being factored you all. That's passive. That's something that you don't even have to, you know, once this starts coming in, of course, you don't, you're don't. you not doing anything but simply collecting the check. Yeah, it may start off slow, one or two drivers, but as you build, if you're serious about building that, then that, that, that three dollars can turn into three hundred. That three hundred can turn into five. That five can turn into a thousand a month, literally. That you're getting from drivers just by them factoring the loads through somebody you recommended. So you don't have to do it with tabs, but I have I have a contact with tabs that I can put you in contact with if you're interested in. I have a contact number. I have a point of contact. To where you can become an ambassador as well. It's just it's just simply as having a conversation with them. And you have to have your documentation in place because they're going to ask you for your W-9 and for your um certificate of, I believe a certificate of existence or articles of organization, one of the two. They're gonna they want to see your company documents to make sure that you're an official company. So that's another reason why you want to get that LLC in place and not do backdoor business because you won't even be able to do that if you're not set up properly. All right, so does anybody have any questions on the factor in play that we just talked about? Any questions on the factor in play? No questions on the factor in play. Okay, praise be to God. Well, lastly, you all, I want to show us how to maximize those next day deliveries. I'm gonna show us how to do that. So let me share the screen. I'm gonna take us to the low board. And for, and for you all who have not taken the course and are on here for the first time for this free masterclass, I rarely ever go to a low board. So you just happen to be in the right place at the right time by the grace of God. So let's share the screen and get to the low board. This low board is truck stop. And so let's 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 do this, you all. Let's do this. Let's do it for a flatbed. The max weight it can scale is 48,000 pounds. It's 48 feet in length. Let's say the pickup date is in the next seven days. Let's say we're located in. Let's say Columbus, Ohio. All 
right? We're gonna leave the destination wide open. And I did our debt hit is 125 miles. Let's see. Let's see who I can ask this question to. Sierra, are you listening? Are you there? Are you present? Are you even in a position to be able to speak? Kind of call some familiar names. R2X, are you in a position to be able to speak? Yes, sir. Do you remember what Deadhead is, R2X? Um, no, sir, man, no, sir. Okay, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. My, bro my, my brother Glenn, my brother Glenn on the line. Good to see you, brother. Oh, good to see you too, big brother, yes, sir. Do you remember what, what Deadhead is, brother? Yes, sir. From the course that you taught me is uh, when a driver is driving, basically not making any money. That's right. Empty. Yes, sir. Empty. Right. Yes, driving sir. empty. Yes, sir. So we have the deadhead currently at 125 miles. So we're going to leave it at that range and we're going to hit 889 loads. So, so check this out, you all. This is what I'm looking for. You can filter for the rate, which is over here in the left corner, and you can not filter, but sort it to show you the highest paying rates, right? It's gonna put all the top paying loads at the top, right? And you see these distances, 2,000 miles, 1,400 miles, 2,400 miles. We're not looking at that because we're looking at next day deliveries. And remember, next day deliveries have to be around 650 or less in order for us to next day the load. So we're looking for the highest paying load under 650. That's that's what we're looking for. That's how, you, that's how you're able to really maximize that profit you all. So I, 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 I sort it by having the highest pin at the top, but I'm monitoring the distance amount too, right? I see it drops down to 850. 850, I can't do anything with that because it's gonna take me two days to deliver that load. So that, that 4,300 is gonna really turn into 20, 2150. So I don't, I don't want that one, but I see this one down here. Four hundred and sixty-seven, four hundred and sixty-seven 467, 467 miles. That's the next day you all paying $4,100. I see why it's paying that much. In the lower notes, it said it's a one pick five drop. I'm running from that, like the coronavirus, you all. It's too many drops, too much time. But this is an example of what, what you would be looking for. You would be looking for the, the highest paying load for the mileage that's under 650 miles that you can next date reasonably. And the reason why is because just imagine you able to get a load for $4,100 for a next day delivery. And if you, and there's five days in a week. So if you're able to get five, five days in the, in the work week from Monday to Friday. So if you're able to get 4,100 five times in a row, then you, you, you've already hit $20,000 that you grossed your client, right? That's, that's something that's rare. You're not gonna find that often. As you can see, it had five drops. That's the reason why it's paying so high. But you want to look for something like that, like this one, 3,600, 508 miles, right? This is an ideal type of load that you want to look for next day. So the concept is to book as many loads in that week that are similar to this, but you have to be mindful not just of how much the load is paying and what the mileage is, but where it's also going to as well. It's going to Washington, D.C. So, of course, we want to make sure Washington, D.C. is a good area to send our driver to because we're not, we don't want to send our driver to a dead zone. And then now we can only get 1,200 coming out of there, right? So in order to find that out, we can just click on view more details. come down here to the load to truck ratio. Remember we talked about this in class. The load to truck ratio where you see
the load to truck ratio in Ohio is for flatbeds is 50 to one. High, very high load to truck ratio. In DC, it's three to one. It's not, it's not as high. Nowhere near as high. It says the, the negotiation strength is favorable, but me personally, three to one is low. So what I would do is I would search for Washington, D.C. on the low board to see what the lows look like in Washington, D.C. This is always your insurance and your backup to really see what the market looks like. So for the origin, I'm going to put Washington, D.C. I'm going to leave destination wide open. So you know, they have a lot of loads. Paying, they're paying decent out of Washington, D.C. It's not that bad. Not that bad at all. That's a load that I would certainly get on. That's the load that I would do, you all. That $3,600 load, that's the load that I would call for my driver if he was in Columbus, Ohio. It's 87 deadhead miles going to Washington, D.C. And as we saw, they have some decent loads coming out of there. $7.08 per mile. $7.08 per mile, you all. That's the type of loads that we're looking for next day delivery. You don't want to get caught up on the loads that are 800 miles and they're paying 4,000. Don't get caught up on the rate because it's going to split that in two. Yeah, it's going to pay 4,000. It's paying more, but it's going to take you two days to deliver it because even if you wanted to drive straight through with the hours of service, you have to stop that truck after 11 hours of driving but for a 10 hour break. So you're not going to be able to deliver that 800 mile load next day. Even though I have a driver that for some reason thinks he can, I don't know how he does it, but he, he he's delivered some loads that I question like, brother, what you got going on? But technically speaking, you are, you want to keep it below 650. All right, that's what I'm looking for when I'm trying to next day lows and maximize the profit. So 3,600 times five, we know that's well over $15,000. That's one, that's something that's around $18,000. $18, so I wanna duplicate that every day of the week, this type of load every day of the week. And we had an example of you making $6,000 for your driver in one week as you can see for flatbeds, that's like, that's nothing. That's, that's absolutely nothing. But it also depends on how hard your driver is running and what, where they're willing to go because all drivers aren't willing to go everywhere, right? So that's a big part of it. Before we move on to the next portion um, of, the, of the masterclass, does anybody have any questions about what we just covered so far? Any questions, any comments? Okay. All right. Let's get back to the training. Um, over Demetrius. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, you mentioned it before, but why do you prefer flatbeds? Well, flatbeds typically pay higher because they require more work. They pay higher um, for that reason. The flatbed driver has to work harder than most other truck drivers uh -huh. because most truck drivers, such as ones that drive drive vans and, and reefers, they, they're bagging their truck into a dock and they're getting loaded through um, a forklift, pallet jack. You have a shipper that's loading it and they once they load it, it's pretty much they, they in their truck just chilling and okay. that's it. So the rates are a little bit lower for dry vans for that reason. Flatbeds, they pay more because the driver has to get out regardless of the weather conditions and, and tarp the load, Not strap great. the load down, make sure it's secure because they're riding on an open bed. So they typically pay higher because of that reason as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. You're welcome. All right. So 
Can everybody see this screen that we're on? The presentation. Make sure everybody can see this. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Sure. All right, so just to close this session out, you all, not to hold us too long, because I know I do have some of my Muslim brothers and sisters on the call, and I know it is Ramadan, and it is time to break the fast for those who can relate and understand. All right. So going over those dispatch basics and going over some of the things that we just covered when it comes to cold calling, cold texting, getting clients, and servicing them that way that we just talked about through booking high quality loads and maximizing the profit. What is it going to take for us to be prepared and able to provide that high level of service for the clients, right? To learn the trucking terminology all the way down to knowing how to negotiate. What is it going to take? This is a list of things that I recommend you have it in place in order for you to really service a driver properly and provide quality service. The first is the knowledge of the language of trucking to communicate with drivers and brokers, because if we don't even know how to communicate with drivers and brokers and speak their language, then they're probably not going to feel confident with us being their dispatcher, right? We're also going to need to know what documents we'll need from the driver. So the main three that you're going to need, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Uh, their W-9, the Certificate of Authority, and Certificate of Insurance, but there are other documents that you may need depending on what broker you're booking the load through. You're going to need to know how to dispatch various equipment types. Brother just asked the question about flatbed, and we were, we were using language like flatbed, dry van, reefers. Those are different equipment types that all provide different services. As a dispatcher, it's our responsibility to be familiar with the different equipment types so we'll know how to handle them if, if our client has that type, right? You they, they come with different accessories, different ways of securing a freight, different uh, areas that pay higher for that equipment type. So we're going to need to know the knowledge of how to dispatch for those different equipment types, as well as how to analyze the market, right? on how to find the highest paying freight. Where is, the, where is it paying the most at for flatbeds? And how do we find the metrics to find where that freight is paying the most so we can keep the driver running and maximizing that profit, right? Analyzing the market is key. It's like knowing your numbers before you invest in a stock. Same way you would look at a price to earnings ratio or an income, income statement before you invest in a stock. It's how you look at the market and trucking before you put your drive in a certain position. Also, proven negotiation tactics with brokers. Brokers are smug. Brokers tend to be arrogant. They tend to be rude. And they will feel like they have all of the power. And they'll hang the phone up when you talk to you rough. I'm telling you that right now. Some are like that. But there are ways you can communicate with a broker to speak their language, to get a rate up. But you have to be confident. You have to know what you're talking about. And you have to be firm in your position as a dispatcher in order to get that rate up. I teach how to communicate with the brokers in order to get your language to a point where you can feel comfortable negotiating that rate with the broker, who's trained to try to get you the, for the lowest rate possible. He's trained that way. So we're trained to avoid that sidestep it and not leave any money on the table. As well as how to master the load board quickly. You all saw me using truck stop load board. That is a load board where we find loads at and we call brokers and book loads at. Um, no, I just pretty much, and you pretty much wanna just make sure that when you're actually dispatching and you have a client that you're not you're not lost on the low board, right? You wanna learn it quickly. You wanna learn how to filter. You wanna learn how to search. You wanna learn how to use the different features and functions that come with the low board without playing a guessing game, right? So we just pretty much walk you through A to Z on how to use the low board. So you're not unfamiliar with it when you actually have to dispatch for your client, all right? The proper way of invoicing for your client is important as well because some drivers may need you to invoice for them. They may not want to 
put the BOL and the rate confirmation in the factory company's portal to get to get paid. I have a driver that prefers me to do it. I don't have a problem doing it. He pays me a little extra for it. It's a very simple process though. So if your driver needs that done and you want to get that driver, you want to obtain them as a client, don't let that be a barrier of you not being able to get a driver by not knowing how to invoice. So uh, we go through the different payment options. There's more than more than just getting paid through a factoring company. There's other payment options as well. And knowing what they are and how to handle them is important when you're dispatching for your client, when you're talking about getting them paid. The worst thing we can do is do something that will cause the money to be delayed by not knowing how to handle invoicing. Because then our driver is going to be looking at us like, where's the, where's the money that I ran for the load? Why is it not in my bank account, right? So we want to make sure we know how to handle that invoicing, as well as how to handle problems when they occur. There's times where you may get to a pickup, your driver may get to a pickup location and the load got canceled. What do you do? You get to a shipper and it says it's not going to be ready until tomorrow. I know uh, Brother Glenn knows, Adrian knows, and uh, some of the people on this call know. That's important to know those things on how to troubleshoot when problems occur because you know, you don't want to put be in a position to where you left money, money on the table because you didn't know what you were eligible for. When I first started dispatching, I was fortunate to be, to be able to have a mentor I could reach out to when problems occurred, but there were times where I couldn't reach them, right? And I didn't really just didn't know what to do. I had to learn later. And having those things in place before you go into it really prevents you from losing a driver. Because we don't want to be in a position to where we don't know how to handle the problem to the point where the driver doesn't feel comfortable with us uh, managing their operation. So knowing how to handle problems is critical, is crucial. Knowing what the problems uh, will be and that can happen is, is good to know in advance. So when it happens, you're not shocked, you're not surprised, you're not caught off guard, you're prepared to handle it and it's not going to affect you. So those things are all important to know before you can really start providing high level service to your drivers. I always mention this to everybody in the dispatch uh, masterclass that I myself, when I was getting that one-on-one -on -one coaching from my mentor, was getting it from him, but I also was on YouTube because I just was so into the concept of dispatching and trucking. I was on YouTube every day. But I did notice while I was on YouTube that there was a lot of conflicting things on YouTube. Somebody said, do it this way. Somebody said, do it this way. Well, so one person said, use this lower board. The other person said, use this lower board. Having a mentor was able to, for me, it, was, it helped me to be able to put things in the right perspective and have a foundation that I could go off of. So now when I'm on YouTube, I'm comparing it to what my mentor was telling me. And that was the difference between having some clarity going into it versus being confused for me personally. You know, YouTube is a good place for people that would like to do trial and error. You can find out what works and what doesn't work. Uh, or you can have somebody that can just pretty much guide you through the process and you get it right the first time the right way. All right. So if you're looking for one on one coaching, as I mentioned, one on one coaching that doesn't just include dispatching. It doesn't just include learning how to book loads for drivers. This one-on-one -on -one coaching is hands-on dispatch training, which will include you also being able to shadow me as I book loads live with drivers on a daily basis. You'll get the opportunity to book some yourself, sending the documents to the, to the uh, factoring company, sending the documents to the broker, filling out carrier packets, but also you, what you're going to receive is uh, fleet ownership. You're going to receive my brother who has the 15 years in experience in trucking, teaching you when you're ready to scale to how to get your own equipment, how to finance the truck, what type of engine that you're going to need, right? Because you have a lot of engines that are bad engines in trucking. And if you don't know what engine to buy or what model of truck to buy, you may be buying some garbage. It's not going to last long. He also is going to tell you how to hire a driver, how to get the right insurance for your trucking company in order to be successful. So you're going to get dispatching, fleet ownership, as well as business credit establishment. 
have a business credit professional, uh, my sister here in Augusta, who has her own finance company as well as nonprofit organization that teaches students how to become financially free. Um, she teaches business credit as well. So when you get your LLC established, she's going to help you um, get your DUNS number, get your Paydex score, and start getting finances for your business that you want to invest and grow your company, you can do it faster without having to use your own money. As well as Brandon, you're gonna need a logo, you're gonna need flyers, you're gonna need business cards. So with this rate that you pay for the one-on-one -on -one coaching, all of that would be included in that package. You have a brand in place, you have logos, flyers, social media marketing, all included with the dispatch training, hands-on fleet ownership, and business credit establishment if you choose to take that route that is the route that is literally gets you there almost instantaneously but if you desire to learn in the classroom setting and just go the dispatching then we also offer that as well we offer the dispatch training course which we know when you're looking at dispatching and you see it online, you see different prices. You see prices range from 250 for one day of live training. I've seen prices that were $500 for one day, like we're doing right now. The basics. This is a free masterclass. I've seen people charge $500 for one day live training. And I, I can't knock them. If they're able to do that, praise be to God. But it takes time and it, you have to learn it in portions and sections to be able to digest it properly. So I wouldn't even feel comfortable charging somebody that amount for one day worth of training. You no, know, they vary, some vary from 250 to one day. Some, some are $700 for three months of access to just recorded videos. I mean that you can't interact with the coach. You can't interact with the teacher to ask questions. It's just videos. Which is, some people can learn just like that. Some people need somebody that can answer questions for them, right? So what I offer in the intensive dispatch training course, and these times and these dates are different now. It was like this initially, but we've opened the time up. Instead of 7.30 to 9 p.m., we actually do it from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you can sit, you can keep your Saturday if you want to have family time or whatever you want to do. Tuesdays and Thursdays for the entire month from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Anywhere between 16 to 18 hours of intensive training to put you in a position where you get access to live training, not just recorded videos, two days a week. Tuesday and Thursday, month long course, not a one day course, access to mentorship. So you're gonna get, just by taking the course, if you have questions about your LLC, EIN number, different questions that you have about your business, we'll help you along with that as well. Um, access to the recorded sessions to study. So after this, the live session, like this session right here is a live session that's being recorded, is going to be sent to you directly following the class, as well as PDF files that are explain the information more in depth, as well as templates as far as your contract, your carrier identity form when you're interviewing a driver to see if they're fit for you, as well as spreadsheets to help analyze the loads that you're booking for your drivers. With that combination, live training it in the recorded videos and the PDF files, templates and spreadsheets. You are many people charged for the PDF files, templates and spreadsheets separately. I've even, I've even had a student tell me, Brother Demetri, you should charge for your load estimator spreadsheet that I built on Microsoft Excel. Just having a, a Microsoft Excel background. But I had to explain to her that that's just not, that's just not me. I just give it out because it's easy for me to build that. I can't even see myself charging for a spreadsheet that, that it literally took me 30 minutes to build. Although it may be complex to somebody else, it's very easy for me to do. And I want my students to have 
that spreadsheet, regardless if they can pay for it or not, because I want them to have all of the tools to be successful. So having all of these features, the course could easily be 600 to $800. Easily, based on what the market rates are going for for dispatch training courses. That's the value of what you'd be receiving through that intensive dispatch training course, right? However, instead of 600 to $800, the fee is only $297, you all. Only $297, one-time fee. If you wanna break it up in payments, that's fine. But for that type of value where you're getting live training, recorded sessions, templates, spreadsheets, and PDFs, you can't beat it, you all. You can't beat it. Most, as I mentioned, are giving you recorded videos and also they're charging for one day sessions. And I've been blessed to have uh, a base where I have not had any negative reviews as, as of yet, by the grace of God. I've only had positive reviews and a lot of the reviews have included the affordability of the course. And yes, we did initially start off the course at $149.99, and we went up in April to $297 because part of it, you all, is being able to provide more value to the students. We noticed that when, when we charge a lower price, we get a lot more students. But when you pay a, for a lower price for something, you tend to get more people, but now you're more scattered because the some of the people that you get aren't as serious, right? So the higher you charge, the more service and value you're able to provide to those who are very serious about the course. That's just the reality when it comes to pricing. I don't know why it's that way, but when we pay for something, we take it more serious. And we also are able to focus on providing more value to the students who are taking it very serious. So. That's just price psychology. Um, my consultant team made me go up in the price last month. And by the grace of God, we have a nice class in April that is able to be nourished in a way where you know, there's no conflict of a bunch of people clouding the class by the grace of God. So we enjoy it that way. All right, so the next training course begins May 3rd. And as I mentioned, those different qualifications that you'll need, all are included in the course. You're going to get dispatch and trucking industry basics for those who are brand new, as well as how to dispatch different equipment types, how to gain clients and keep them, load board mastery, how to book loads, route planning strategies, how to identify the hot regions where the money is paying the most for that equipment, as well as effective and proven negotiation strategies, how to open our mouth and communicate to get that load up to maximize that profit, as well as how to handle properly the invoicing and payment options for the driver to make sure they get paid on time and for the right amount. And lastly, you're getting those spreadsheets that I mentioned and templates for your contracts, for your identity forms, and for whatever you need access to that I have, you'll get that template all included in that package. So you are, if you desire to sign up, you just would simply go to torchlightdispatch.com and click on dispatch training course. And you can sign up for the one-on-one -on -one coaching if that's your preference, or you can sign up for the intensive dispatch training course. If you need assistance in doing that, just reach out to me via email or phone. My phone number's on there as well. And I'll be more than welcome to, to help walk you through that process. Um, at this particular time, if there's anybody in the room that has taken the course, that has received some value from the course and is implementing the information. I know we don't have many on this call right now, but I would love to hear from you and see where you are in your journey right now as a testimonial. See brother R2X, brother Glenn. Those are the only two that I, I see Adrian too. They have taken it. Yes, sir, brother. Um, real quick, um, so far since the course, I've started my LLC, uh, got that out the way, Reforma Logistics LLC. 
Uh, my business card just came in. Now I'm looking to uh, get my laptop going. And uh, yeah, that's what we got so far, big brother. Thank you so much, man. All praise be to God, brother Glenn. Praise be to God, brother. Keep moving, brother. Get together. Keep moving. Yes, sir. Congratulations, brother. Thank you so much, brother. Yes, sir. All praise be to God. Yes, sir, brother. And brother, brother is getting the foundation together in order to you know, get everything he needs done to start maximizing that profit. And he's building this foundation. So it's it's definitely a, an honor to be able to to be a part of coaching because it's not just dealing with this fashion. I just truly enjoy being in a position to share and impart whatever God has blessed me with to help others as it has helped me. I truly believe that's a gift and skill that Almighty God, Allah, has given me by the grace of God. I'm striving to maximize it in every realm that I find myself in. So once again, you all, if you desire to sign up for the, dis the dispatch training class for next month, you simply will go to torchlightdispatch.com, click the flyer, add one to the cart, proceed to check out. We take either credit, debit, PayPal, or if you want to cash out for some particular reason, we do take cash out as well, but you would just need to let me know your email address so I can email, I can put you on the email list to receive the actual Zoom link and all of the information like the homework assignments and things of that nature it won't automatically come to my email if we do it through Cash App. So that is your method. Just email me that you're going to do it through Cash App so I can be aware of that. And if you have any questions about anything we covered in the course or what the course may entail, you can reach out to me at 706-667-1917 or you can email me at dispatch at torchlightlogistics.com. And that email will be coming to you all soon after this class downloads and you get the recorded session from this live training um, masterclass, you will have my email in place. So you can reach out to me there or phone, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Brother, I do have one question. Yes, sir. Um, the term that when a shipper utilizes third party, what is that called? When the shipper utilizes third party? In what yes, way, sir. brother? In what way? In what well, way? And it, it say like when they they charge us extra. Oh, you to my lumpers. Yes, sir. You to my lumper fees. Lumpers, okay. Lumpers. Yes, sir. Lumpers. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm just going over some notes, sir. Praise <laughs> be to God. Praise be to God. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you for that question, brother. Yes, sir. All right. Does, if any, does anybody have any other closing questions or comments? Concerns, anything they want to address at this particular time? If not, I thank you all for coming on and spending time with your brother. May God continue to bless you. I pray you all have a blessed rest of your evening. Reach out to me at any time. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. I'll send this to you all briefly as soon as it downloads. Y'all have a blessed rest of y'all night. Thank, thank you. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Welcome.